This is all about community, if you don't know this by now. The super meets are all about community. And the people that we have on stage next bridge the gap of the story and continue that conversation because every one of you in this audience is an artist. I think of you that way. Certainly, Avid thinks of you that way. And here tonight, we have with us Megan Keene from Artist Relations at Avid, who is going to share some wonderful moments with you right now here. So a warm welcome to Megan Keene from Avid. You're welcome. All right, thank you, Dan. And thank you guys for having us here of the Super Meet here in Boston. And we've got a great presentation put together for you. We at Avid are really lucky because we have an amazing diversity of customers, customers who produce everything from television to web content, broadcast news, and feature films. Um, and we have one of those amazing customers here with us tonight. Uh, you'll recognize his face up on the screen, Andy Weisblum, who is the editor of some very popular recent uh, features. So Andy's going to talk to us a little bit about how he works and how he works specifically uh, with Darren Aronofsky on Black Swan. But first, before Andy, we have uh, part of our product specialist team, uh, Corey Tedrow, who is going to show you guys some of what's coming in the future for Media Composer, what you can look forward to. All of the things that Corey's gonna show you right now are from recommendations that have come from you guys, from our customers. All right, I am going to leave you in the very capable hands of Corey Tedrow. Thank you, Megan. Okay, um, so wow, a lot of cool stuff going on up here on stage, and I'm going to show you a few more cool things um, before we get into the um, editors, and you can switch the screen now, please. Um, and I really like that Alexis kicked it off talking about um, them being Switzerland, because what he really is talking about is openness, and if you haven't uh, uh, checked out Avid in a while or listened to us in a while, and um, We've been, we've been on this openness kick for a, a few years now, and I'm going to show you a little bit about that uh, in my demo here. And uh, I'm glad that Mark followed it up, showing you uh, the interoperability that we have between not just Smoke, but um, we also can send AAF uh, to Black Magic products. So um, we're not just, uh, we don't want to keep people in one sandbox. We want you to be able to uh, work how you want to work. So this is just uh, to show you the piece that, that Mark showed you. This is just a 30 second spot um, and that's it there. The rates and fees were low and their crew kept me updated. So those are, the those are the time warps that Mark was talking about that need to be rendered. But all that metadata came across and that's thanks to AAF, the um, advanced authoring format, and that allows us to, um, you know, collaborate and send things somewhere else. You may, if you don't, if you decide not to finish on Media Composer, you can finish elsewhere. So, um, if folks uh, are, have been using Media Composer for a while, you may be familiar with AMA, um, Avid Media Access, and that is a uh, plug-in architecture. We basically re-architected um, how Media Composer deals with media to enable uh, us to get um, basically more codecs and more flexibility into the hands of our users faster. And if you're not familiar with what AMA is, it's um, basically, I'm going to go here and uh, I'm going to plug in my mouse so I can scroll, uh, allows me to basically link natively to any number of files. Today we support uh, ProRes and QuickTime and uh, RED files, R3D files. And uh, in this technology preview that I'm showing you here today, we are going to be adding support for AVCHD. So that's something folks have been asking about for a while, and now we can bring that to you. And basically, um, I've just pointed to some files that are on the desktop there, and I'll load them up. I think this is from NASA. Yeah, so we're on a space station there. But that is AVCHD footage that I can play back and view straight from my desktop. So that's very cool for folks that are working in the AVCHD codec. But even cooler is we now support, and I'm going to do this one more time, 
uh, EPIC files. So uh, we've been supporting the RED uh, format, the R3D format, for quite a while. And now we have the ability with uh, AMA to uh, support the EPIC camera. I was just in uh, Denver at a show where they had a, we had an EPIC camera in our booth. And people just came up and wanted to touch it. Like, can I just touch it, please? Because it's just, and it's really cute, actually, but it's very cool. And um, I'm going to zoom in here. So these are my EPIC files. And we'll take a look at what we have. Um, and I've just put them all out of the window. So let's fill our window there and zoom over. So, OK. So here's, these are 5K files that I'm just linking to on the desktop. So I'm going to load this up. And I actually have, and you may have seen it if you came to my desk outside, but I actually have a very cool um, Avid Artist Color. And this is a control surface. If you're not familiar with this concept, it's basically a device that allows me to freeze me from the mouse and the keyboard, and I can um, work with some nice tactile controls. The cool thing about this is that, obviously, it's for color correction, color grading. Um, now, I'm, I'm not a Lexus. I'm not going to pretend to be a real colorist. But I do have a pretty cool set of tools in Media Composer. And now, with support for the artist color, I can actually use this to uh, do some color grading. So I, I, I also like to point out, right now, I'm in source record mode. And I can actually use the, um, right now, I'm shuttling. With the artist color, I can mark an in and move along and mark it out. And I can, uh, let's make a sequence here, and we'll actually start uh, doing some corrections. And I can toggle right into color correction mode here from the surface. And it's really designed, like I said, to just free you from the mouse and the keyboard so that you can use um, this surface for doing your tactile controls. Now I'm going to navigate into the Curves tab, and I'm doing that just from the surface itself. And um, let's, uh, let's bring a point in here in our green and tab that up. And you'll see that I can actually move that. And then I can move another point down. And I can bring a point down in the reds at the same time. I'll lock that one and make a little S curve. And I did mention that I am not a professional colorist, so I'm just going to show you what all these cool little wheels do. But it is important to note that I can do this. I'm, I'm manipulating things in real time, so I can move more, um, more than one thing at, at a time. I also have knobs up here that are touch sensitive, and I can use these really cool knobs for tweaking master gain, which you may or may not be able to see moving over there. You can see it adjusting in the window. So as I said, it's, uh, our customers have been asking for this forever. You know, when, when we came out with the Symphony Color Corrector, which is you know, probably before some of you folks were born, but it's been out for a long time. And for us that long, uh, folks have been wanting a surface like this. So it's very exciting to be able to offer it. And it, we're, I'm showing it on Media Composer here, but it also works obviously with Symphony. And let me just show you, uh, I have some of the other fr uh, family members of the Artist series. Well, this is the Transport. So that's, you know, if you long for that nice, solid jog wheel for a deck, you have that. This is for you audio folks out there. This is uh, the Mix, obviously lots of faders. And then we have the Control, which is the combo for mixers, nice um, touch panel, and a little transport button. And then this is the color, which is the one that I'm showing you. Now, what I want to point out is that I'm showing this on Media Composer, but let's go back to that openness thing that I, that I mentioned. All of these surfaces work with other applications. So if I wanted to use this with Smoke, or if I wanted to use it with Final Cut Pro, or if I wanted to use it with Pro Tools or Logic, that's all there for you. We're not limiting what application you have to use this with. Um, we want to let you have the freedom to choose that. So um, following on my openness theme here, uh, a few other things that we're going to be um, able to show you really soon is um, You'll see we have lots of uh, uh, other vendors out there. Uh, we've added support for the AJA uh, IO Express uh, recently, as well as the um, Matrix MX02. And we're going to be building on that. We're developing a, an SDK that's going to allow even more third parties to be able to do IO. So you will be able to have your choice, really, of a vendor for um, 
uh, input output. Uh, I also like to point out uh, our buddies at Aja have uh, added DNX HD support to their Key Pro. Very cool box. Um, they have some out there if you want to check it out. So um, I didn't I didn't highlight it when I showed you the the offline for the smoke, but that was DNX HD. Um, DNX HD is a, a great codec. Uh, folks are using it for dailies and in in uh, film production, they're using it for broadcasting, uh, places like Discovery. So I just want to highlight that. And last but not least, just to really prove that we are totally agnostic in terms of, uh, I was talking about, well, let's do a transcode. I was talking about um, DNX HD, but I also want you to know that if you would like to work in ProRes, we now, or soon, we'll be adding the ability to be able to transcode or render out to ProRes right from your Media Composer timeline. So, yay! And I think that's it for me. So thank you very much.